Do you happen to have a set of actual and predicted values lying around? If you answered yes, then this video is for you because today we're going to be building a machine learning model performance calculator app in Python using the Streamlit library. And so what the web app will do is it will take in the actual and predicted values and then it will produce the model performance metrics such as accuracy, Matthews correlation coefficient, and many others. And so without further ado, let's dive in. And so before we continue with the explanation, let me launch the application so that you can see. So we're launching this performance metrics application. And so let me fire up the terminal and then I'm going to activate my Conda environment. And so you could do the same. Don't activate Data Professor because this is my Conda environment. So depending on the name of your Conda environment, you want to activate that. And now we're going to the folder which contains the application. And then we're going to launch it by typing in streamlit run app.py. Enter. And then this is the app. Let's have a look at the sidebar. And so it will take in the input file here. Let me show you. So the input file will be a B example. Let me show you what is the content of that. And so it's going to be a simple classification model. And in this example, we have the actual column and the predicted column. So you're going to see that the actual value is A and the predicted value is A. So this is a correct prediction. Whereas AB here is a incorrect prediction. AA is correct prediction. BB are correct predictions. BA are incorrect predictions. And so this is our input. So let me drag and drop it here. And then you're going to see that it loads up the data in the input data section and it, it computes the confusion matrix for you and it is going to have the performance metrics for you. And so all of the performance metrics indicated in here and the sidebar panel are displayed in the data frame. And so you could feel free to customize, take away some of the metrics and then the data frame will be updated in real time. And so for this example, we're going to build the model performance calculator app and it will be for classification models. And so you could essentially do the same thing and create a version for the regression model. And so I'll leave that up to you guys for your assignment. And please feel free to share the links to your deployed application. And so let's get into the line by line explanation of the code. So let me launch the app.py file. I'll have it open in Atom and let's have a look. Okay, so let's see how many lines of code are there. So there are exactly 100 lines of code, 100 lines of code, exactly. And so the first couple of lines will be importing the necessary libraries. And we're using the Streamlit library because this is based on the Streamlit web application framework. And we're going to use also the pandas library because we display the data frame here. And we also make use of the pandas data frame. We're going to use the base64 library because we're encoding the information which will be allowing us to download the CSV file as the export file for the model performance metric. And then we're going to use the image function from the pill library because we're going to display the logo here at the top. And then we're going to use the scikit-learn metrics in order to import the confusion matrix function, which will allow us to display the confusion matrix. And we're also going to import all of the performance metrics function here, as you can see from the sklearn.metrics module as well. And then you're going to see that lines 9 through 30 were defining a custom function which will calculate the performance metrics used in the data frame here. And so these include the accuracy. Actually, we took away the accuracy. Let me refresh it. So it includes the accuracy, the balance accuracy, the precision, the recall, the MCC, F1 score, and the Cohen's kappa. And so they're defined here. So each of the performance metrics function are used, and then they're defined into the corresponding variable names. And in the first two lines here, line number 10 and 11, we're essentially going to be taking the input value 
the actual and the predicted columns, which is columns one and columns two. And then we're going to use it to calculate the accuracy and all of the other performance metrics. Finally, we're going to take the values of the performance metrics, and then we're going to convert it into a pandas series and then assign it to the corresponding variable names. Finally, we're going to use the pd.concat in order to combine all of the series variable so that we have the data frame that we see at the bottom here, the data frame that you see here. And then we're gonna return the data frame out, okay? And so we're gonna use this function later on. And lines number 33 until 38, we're going to calculate the confusion matrix, which you see right here. So as usual, it takes in the first and second column of the input file. It will assign it to the actual and predicted variables. And then it's gonna use it for calculating the confusion matrix. And then finally, we're going to create a data frame of it and then give it the column names of actual and predicted. And then we're gonna give it the index of actual and predicted so that we see the index name and also the columns name and then we're going to return it out and then the third function lines number 41 through 43 we're going to load the example data and so this will be the yexample.csv which we use upon clicking on the use example data button lines 46 through 50 it's going to be a custom function for us to download the csv file shown below here download csv file and then on lines 53 until 56, it's going to be the sidebar and it's going to be the header of the sidebar. So it, it is saying st.sidebar.header input panel. So it's right here in the sidebar input panel. And so make note that we're using the st.sidebar. The sidebar here will specify the location of the header function. And so if I take away the sidebar, it's going to be moved to the main panel. Okay, so we're going to leave it there because we want it in the sidebar. And then lines 54 through 56 is going to display the example CSV file button right here, example CSV file. So clicking on this will give you the example data. Okay, and the example data is actually the one used here as well. And then lines 59 is going to be the file uploader function and the input argument will allow it to type in or display upload your input CSV file. And then we specify that the input will only be accepting CSV extension for the file name. Okay, and then we assign the uploaded file to the uploaded file variable. And actually, if we delete a line here, it's going to be 60, it's going to be 99 lines now. So it's less than 100 now. And then on line 62 and 63 is going to be the performance metrics. Let me show you. It's right here. So performance metrics will include the accuracy, balance accuracy, as I've mentioned. And this is the list. And then the performance metric list will be used as input here. And so the performance metrics in the quotation mark, it will be the name shown above the options that you see. And then we're using the st.sidebar.multiselect function in order to display the multiple selections of the performance metric. So the two performance metrics variable used here will allow us to display all of the performance metrics in the possible option. So let's see, what if I modify this to be only accuracy? Let's see what happens. And then you're going to see that the accuracy is displayed here. And so this Let's see what if I put in precision and we have precision here. So it's the selected value. And what if I do the same thing, but put it here instead, save it. It doesn't work. Okay. So this is the full option. So the full list should be placed in the second position. Okay. So the entire list here should go here. And then the third position here, the input argument will be the one that we're going to select. Okay, so I think I need a new keyboard because the built-in keyboard of the MacBook Pro sometimes is not working. All right, so the third option here that you see will allow us to select the default parameters, okay? And then lines 66 until 72 will be the header here. It will display the image in the line number 66 until 67. So this will be responsible for displaying the logo. 68 will display the 
web page title that you see here, Model Performance Calculator app. And then the 69 until 72 will display the description of the app that you see right here. And let's have a look further. Line 74 until 99. Okay, so here you're going to see that we're using the if else logic. Okay, and so in the else condition, by default, when you load the web page for the first time, it will default to the else condition. And so it will display the message awaiting the upload of the input file. Okay, and so upon uploading the input file, CSV file that you see here, so we could just browse file, click on it, or we could drag and drop the input file into the box here. Then afterwards, it will invoke the if condition, okay? Because when a file is uploaded, the if condition will be activated because the first line on line number 74, it will do a test or evaluation whether we have uploaded the file or not. If we have uploaded the file, it will run the following lines of code. But if we haven't uploaded the file yet, it will go to the else condition. And then you're going to see the awaiting the upload text message here, along with the button use example data. So let's take a look at the else condition. So we have the if embedded inside the else, and this is for the button. And so we use if st.button. And so th what this means is that upon clicking, if the st.button is clicked, perform the following statements, right? So if we click on it, it will perform the calculation on the example data. And so what does it do? It will load the example data on line number 89, and then it will perform the calculation of the confusion matrix on line number 90, and then it will calculate the performance metrics on line number 91, and then line number 92 will allow it to display the data frame for the selected metrics. And so the selected metrics variable here is right here. Okay, it is right here, right here. This is the selected metric. So whatever is left here, the data frame will display it. Okay. Okay. So whatever performance metrics are selected here, the data frame will be displaying only those selections. And then lines 93 will display the input data right here, input data 93 and 94. 93 is the header, 94 is the actual data frame. Lines number 95 will display the confusion matrix header, and 96 will display the confusion matrix data frame. Line number 97 will display the performance metric header, and then line number 98 will display the data frame of the performance metric. Line number 99 will be the link to download the CSV file. Okay, and so the same exact explanation is also made for the if condition. Okay, with the only exception is line number 75 and line number 89. Okay, so in the example, line number 89 will be loading in the example data from the load example data function. And then lines number 75 will be loading the CSV file from the uploaded file. So uploaded file right here from the uploaded box displayed here. Okay, and so there you have it, the explanation under the hood of the performance metrics application. And congratulations, you have built the model performance calculator app. And if you would like to deploy this application to the web, to the cloud, then you want to check out the two videos that I have created prior to this. And so links will be up in the top right hand corner. Feel free to check those out so that you'll be able to deploy the Streamlit application to the cloud, either using the Streamlit sharing or using the Heroku platform. Thank you for watching until the end of this video. Please let me know in the comments down below how you intend to use this application. And I would greatly appreciate it if you support the channel by smashing the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, and also, and also turning on the notification bell so that you will be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.